party. I'm not calling him a seller or anything like this, but the reality is the reality. There were several debates, like in 2016 with Hillary Clinton, he chose not to go for the jugular. Now, we could debate why that is. It's just not in him. It's, you know, not how we do things, whatever. But I agree with the, with the need for organizing and door knocking. But really, one of the most, one of the biggest opportunities you have as a candidate is te- nationally televised debates, particularly among the, the demographic that Bernie needed to reach most, which is older voters, because they yeah. watched those debates, and there were 12 of them. Now, Lots. in American history... As you know, the American people, majority of them are not political diehards. They are visual creatures. You know, when Reagan said to, what was it, Mondale, oh, I won't, I won't hit you for your inexperience. That was like the closest thing to a viral moment back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. That, yes, was. that was a moment that, honestly, many people think won him election. Uh, when Richard Nixon was schwitz, schwitzing on nas- national television against K- JFK and looked like, you know, what a mess. I mean, we know that they kind of stole the election for JFK anyway, the mob, but that's a different story. Uh, Mm -hmm. That didn't look good. So if Bernie Sanders, you know, I I hate to say anything good about Trump, but the one thing Trump did very well in 2016, obviously he didn't mean any of the underlying things he was promising, but he called, he, he, he called, he, he called names, you know, puppet. He named names. He didn't, he he didn't say my friend Ted Cruz over here, this, that, the other thing. And people respond to that because they like in this moment with such economic pain, they like someone who just is above the BS and will call out everybody else. And I think particularly in that one on one debate uh, in the as coronavirus was CNN uh, debate yep. with no audience, you could tell like Bernie was hitting up against that wall, whether it's not in him to do it or he made some agreement with the DNC where remember he, he said to Joe Biden, wait, you're saying you didn't do that? You know? mm-hmm. Yes, but that call him like a direct liar. Right. You know? What you should have done is simply say, I'm sorry, Vice President Biden, but you're lying to the American people. You did mm-hmm. write the bankruptcy bill, and here's how it devastated the people that will be voting uh, in the next primary. Mm-hmm. Another thing, and I, don't want, I, I, I do not want to white splain. I don't want to white splain. I'm obviously not black. But mm-hmm. to me, I don't know any political campaign. I don't know any political campaign, including progressives. Mm-hmm. that wouldn't have run ads in South Carolina showing Joe Biden lying about being arrested on his way to meet Nelson Mandela, mm-hmm. lying about being on the front lines of civil rights sit-ins when he never was in one of them, mm-hmm. lying in front of black churches, in black churches in front of black people, yes, he did. Pound, he pound, did. Around, around with Strom Thurmond in the mm-hmm. 1970s. Defending now, busing, defending busing at right. the Kamala Hit him exactly. out on that. Not, you know, uh, I'm not saying Bernie would have won South Carolina, but I don't think he loses by 30 points because you could tell me if I'm wrong. I've interviewed older black voters. They didn't know about any of this stuff because the media didn't report it. Mm-hmm. So Bernie, I, it was winnable. He was on the verge of winning going into South Carolina. He, yes, could, he, ha- he could have won if he lost South Carolina by 10 to 15 rather than 30 because I don't think if he would have lost by 10 to 15 – I don't think you see that type of consolidation slash dropout, no matter who Obama called. Uh, Mm -hmm. It was the 30-point overwhelming blowout that allowed Obama to enforce his will. But the bottom line is, forgetting point by point, Mm -hmm. I don't think Bernie should have dropped out when he dropped out. I don't have a problem with him endorsing Biden. He said he was going to endorse the Democratic nominee. He's just following through. But. Mm -hmm. When, if you're doing these things, you have to actually extract real tangible things. Now, in fairness, okay. in, fa- I, in, fa- in fairness, maybe there is something we don't know about, but I doubt it. Well, now, what is- has Bernie, let me finish. What has Bernie extracted, Andrew? Biden lowering the age of Medicare to 60? Well, well, thank you. That will help, you know, that will help me 30 years after I die from coronavirus because I'm 33. And I'm not going to die, but you get the point. It's not mm-hmm. helping the majority of the people. Secondly, uh, some half-baked means-tested plan for college affordability, which we know he's not going to fight for. Now, yes, yes right. it is. Very and big, yeah. we've gotten some task force, which, <laughs> like, Sarah Palin's bri- like Sarah Palin's bridge to nowhere, I can tell you where those task force are going. So yep. to, to, me, to me, unless Joe Biden is selecting Nina Turner, and I think there's a better chance of me outdueling Tom Brady in a football game, 
uh, as his hey, vice. I won't, I won't underestimate you on that because Brady's assistant quarterback. I'm right. just keeping it real. Just like Jordan is the best of all time. In Jordan, terms of Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Jordan is the best of all time. Well, That's crazy. We, we could have a separate discussion on that. And even 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 Emma Viglin would probably RTS or whatnot, and we just don't associate with her anymore. But anyway, <laughs> bottom line is Bernie has gotten jack shit for doing live hostage videos with Biden, live streams where it looks like Biden, Bernie is there against his will, where they have task forces which mean nothing. And the truth is, as you know, because you've 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 reported on money and politics, Bernie's not actually AOC Bernie. They're not negotiating with Biden. Biden doesn't make the decisions. His donors, no, his donors make the decisions. So yep. Biden could say whatever the hell he wants now. He could say, you know, we need to forgive rent, not delay it. You think his real estate developers are down with that? You, you, you think you think the fi- Wall no, Street? Not. So no. anyway, that's my that's my rant. What do you mm-hmm. say to that? Well, sir, first I say this. First, I'm glad that you are fully recovered from coronavirus. For Thank people you. that don't know, Jordan had a case of coronavirus or whatnot, and. It was. It's really that real for people yeah. that still kind of questioning that. It really is that real. Kim Iverson viewers, for example, still questioning that. Don't even get me started on her. Oh, no. Oh, there's a lot for me to explain. We're in solidarity about that, brother. Right? But yeah. Jordan, you're t- you're not you're not seeing the full picture, sir. You're getting the loco. I have to give you the Stephen A. Smith to your Skip Bell is here, sir. All right. Okay. That's it was good because Matt Tellman is good guy. But all right, Jordan. I'm not, Jordan, oh you, can't see me. you can't see me, Jordan. Jordan, you can't see me or whatnot. Because, Jordan, you're not seeing the whole picture or whatnot, okay? All right, so let's let's go through all this or whatnot. First, in terms of the factors of the one-on-one debate and in, in, in tied into South Carolina, okay? Joe Biden... Well, and, well, in fairness, that wasn't a one-on-one. They didn't have a one-on-one date before South on Carolina. Four, one on four. It was right. one... Oh, yeah. yeah, all right. So th- let's get... Let's get in fact, let's talk about that, all right? The first three states of the primary election, all right, and going to the last two times that Joe Biden ran for president, Obama's VP, okay? Joe Biden had not won a single state, a single state in his three times, or two and two times in three states of running president overall. So, by the way, Dunkin' Donuts, send this man a check for that promotion right there, right? <laughs> so he's not won a single state, all right? He went from last year being the favorite, the front runner, and then, uh, and then it was a mix of then Bernie the co-favorite, then is Elizabeth Warren the co-favorite, then Bernie has a heart attack, so is Warren gonna get Bernie's lane, then Kamala Harris, is she gonna emerge, da 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 then it's like, and then, oh, Bernie reemerges again, but Biden's still the favorite in December, but then he clearly, people see that this man is just not good at all. Like, he's not even smarter than Hillary, even though him and Hillary are the same centrist overall, he just is not smart and he has like a penis. So like that's the that's the only difference. But again, Hillary is way more popular of all despite because of her being a celebrity for so many years. And Biden got his whole career revived because Obama needed someone to make the banks comfortable with in 08 to choose as his running mate. So you have the first three elections, as we saw in Iowa. The one thing about Iowa that we two things about Iowa that we can guarantee is that Bernie Sanders definitely had the most support in the state, and that Joe Biden, um, there's more of us here than who supported Joe Biden in Iowa, all right? That's how we saw, and you saw in person, you saw directly when you were out there that there was no Joe Biden supporters or whatnot. Well, you, you got to take out the glasses and be like, that's what it was, all right? So now you have that. Then you have in New Hampshire, after they tried to prop up Buttigieg and then Klobuchar the whole week or whatnot, only for Bernie to still win, you have a still split fill, uh, a mostly literary fill, but Biden finishes fourth in New, no, fifth in New Hampshire, right? They, either fourth or fifth. Either way, he got his clock clean again and got his ass whooped where he left New Hampshire and went to South Carolina right away instead of not even go to Nevada because they were so scared. They were so scared about what it was because they knew in Nevada they were hoping that they could use the culinary bosses to trip up Bernie and do the Medicare for all BS or whatnot and try to be like, oh, it's, it's actually the visible on the workers and try to do the same BS they did four years ago that American Ferreira and um, and I forgot the lovely um, the, Dolores Herta that try to frame Bernie supporters being racist and Susan, Susan Saran as being racist. They, and that's how Hillary was able to narrow that one out there along with Harry Reid helping. <coughs> Shout out to Fast Cure. But um, it's something where you have you have you have the thing that they try to do in Nevada in a different way, 
only for it to not get worked at all. And it wasn't because of Chuck Roca or other great Latino supporters that are part, or Latinx supporters, part of Bernie's campaign. It was because Bernie just is just consistently out there and his message resonates overall in terms of poor Latino voters that are just looking for someone to represent them. And that's how the Nevada burnout, or the Nevada burnout as a call out, happened. 30 point win, you got Claire McCaskill freaking out, and you had the networks, they made sure, because the networks thought they could, the party, tried to th the party tried to think they could get away with what they did in Iowa, because that's a scandal right there, no matter what anyone tells me. The scandal was right there for anyone to see. But you had the party trying to do the same thing where they weren't releasing the results of the election initially, if you remember that, right? Mm -hmm. That you were waiting for it to be like, why is it taking so long to still release these results? But the networks, they were so pissed at what happened in Iowa, or what the party was doing, that they made sure to put independent reporters at the precincts to do the counting and shit to make sure that they were going to have a delay, like an all night delay and then multiple days delay mess like they did in Iowa. And they couldn't, and they had to realize, wow, Bernie Sanders truly can win this nomination. Not only win this nomination, win it early. Win the nomination early. And that's why Chuck Todd was asking about, oh, if you have the plurality, da 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 or if you have the most delegates one, then you're going to, are you going to say, you're going to favor the nominee, whether it's you or anybody else. And that's why they asked him that at the debate. All right. So you have the, you have the Nevada burnout. We're all on a high in terms of everyone on the left. We're laughing at Claire McCaskill and James Carville freaking out all over the place. All right. Joe Biden, despite finishing second, he lost by 30 points, Jordan, and he still had less um, delegates than Buttigieg and even Klobuchar, I think, at that time. And the thing even more. So you have a guy who is basically fading. The whole headlines are like, this is Joe Biden's last chance or whatnot. And really, we thought Buttigieg was who they were going to pick. In fact, we thought that all the centrists wanted to do, because they realized that Bernie's support is so real, and he's got younger black support. So he's basically got all the supporters that clearly older voters and older black voters know him now, unlike four years ago, right? Or know him more. So it's something where it's like, all right, he's got all the, the boxes checked off or whatnot. How can we do something where we can, we have to do something where it's more than just denying him 1991 delegates, the, the majority, all right? Because we thought that all they were going to try to do was everyone's going to try to stay in the race as long as possible to decide to stop him from reaching that ceiling. You saw that ceiling that Chuck Todd and all centrist media were saying that, oh, Bernie's only getting 30, 30, 30 percent of the vote. He's only getting 30 percent of the vote. If the centrists all line up together, if they all combine together, oh, they will have more votes than him and all this dumb BS and whatnot. When people knew that it's a divided field with five viable candidates that are popular enough to get votes, of course, he's going to just not, not going to have more than he's not going to even come close to having 50 percent of the vote. We all know that. But casual voters don't because they just see the numbers and they say, wow, Bernie Sanders, he had this support against Hillary four years ago where he had, he dominated New Hampshire, but now he just barely won New Hampshire. And it's like, yes, because there's more people in the damn race and Hillary is unpopular. So, so you have all those factors or whatever. So you got South Carolina League, all right? And there was no need for Bernie to even think about Biden. Because he was going to pass him inevitably as it was as what it should be because Buddha judge was the person that they were trying to find. And then Bloomberg, Bloomberg was still a factor where he was about to emerge in the race, right? So you still had his ass in there, despite not being on the ballots in Nevada and South Carolina, being in the debates on those debates. And this is how crazy Tom Perez and all of them did this shit because there was no reason for Bloomberg to even be in those damn debates if he was not even on the ballot in those damn states, all right? So there was no need for Bernie to focus on Biden at all. Biden's a fading right. candidate at all. He's fading even in South Carolina. Like South Carolina's gonna pass Super Tuesdays right after. He's Bernie's leading in Texas. He's leading in all the states. He lead, I mean, he's even almost beating Warren in Massachusetts. Almost beating Klobuchar in Minnesota. There was no need to focus on Biden. But I, but I, but I'm sorry to interrupt. But I think where we disagree mm -hmm. is. Not, not, I don't think we're disagreeing on um, the, you know, there's, there's for everything, there's a macro issue and a micro issue, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're disagreeing with the micro issue that like Bernie was on a roll heading into South Carolina and like 
he didn't need to go scorched earth on, on Biden. Mm -hmm. I do think he needed to bring up the civil rights lies, but let's table that for a second. Mm -hmm. What the main issue is for why Bernie was even in the position at that point for a uh, three-day Obama uh, sparked consolidation coalition calls was because Bernie Sanders never took off the gloves. And if he would have taken off the gloves, let me, let me explain why. For example, and I'm not, I'm not Monday morning quarterbacking. I said it when it was going on. I was in mm -hmm. Iowa. I said Bernie's campaign should not be just declaring victory with the popular vote and moving on to New Hampshire. Just like I said it in 2016, they should be kicking, screaming, and filing lawsuits about the New York primary. But I was told we don't want to look like sore losers by his campaign back then. Let me finish. After this Iowa fraud, that's what it was. This was an inside job by Tom Perez. It wasn't an app malfunction. Troy, Troy Price, the fall guy, the right. fall guy, that, that with the Associated Press still won't ever declare a winner. Right. And, and, and now that, what you mentioned about the Des Moines Register, even though some people in the Buttigieg campaign, and my friend for sure, I called them out on stuff, and clearly there was something fishy when yeah. that that poll did not come out. When Let me tell you something. If, if, if Bernie Sanders' campaign complained that one person polled wasn't given Bernie as an option, yeah. Des Moines Register would have leaked it to the media and not, not uh, you know, blocked their poll from getting it. But the bottom line is... People focus on Nevada and South Carolina. The Bernie Sanders campaign, if they would have right then and there said uh, Pete Buttigieg is not the winner of the Iowa caucus, this is fraud, we want, an, we want an independent investigation, the media cannot then give Pete Buttigieg hundreds of millions of dollars of free advertising for Major. seven for seven to – I went straight to New Hampshire – Yep. Buttigieg got a 10-point bump in New Hampshire because, yes, because Bernie's campaign basically sent out a press release and some social media, well, we won the popular vote, we're moving on, without pointing out and fighting this is fraud. Look at the donors who were behind this app. These were former Hillary Clinton staffers. Uh, that's what his base would have wanted. And the media could not, could not, even the corporate media, could not ignore that if Bernie's campaign is calling out fraud. So mm -hmm. the reason that Bernie only won New Hampshire, even though it was 12 candidates he was facing by one point, is because Buttigieg got a 10-point bump that week because he got hundreds of millions of dollars of free yep. advertising as the Iowa caucus winner. So yep. that's, that's number one. This is what I'm talking about, the macro issue, and it's not Bernie's campaign's fault. A lot of people are criticizing his campaign. Sure, there's strategical errors in every campaign. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, if the candidate is the final decider on the major issues, because Bernie makes the final decisions, him and Jane, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what Fez Shakir tells him to do, or Nina Turner pleads, or pleads with him, or Jeff Weaver. So Bernie always wanted to be above the fray, didn't want to look like a sore loser. Let's, let's just declare that we won the Iowa caucus, we had the popular votes. But if you would have pointed out the fraud, if you would have pointed out, literally, no, nobody's on Twitter are tweeting out that the, the um, delegate sheets don't match up. And they were right. I mean, the bottom line is, if you would have done that, Buttigieg does not get to 24% in New Hampshire. Because I could tell you, I interviewed voters before the New Hampshire primary in New Hampshire. They said, no, who was? Well, they who all, nine out of ten of them said, I've been seeing a lot more about this Buttigieg guy since mm -hmm. Iowa. Yeah. So that's how, manufact that's how manufacturing consent works and all that. Then, let me finish. Okay, so if he would have done that, I think he wins Iowa by uh, New Hampshire by more. Then, then... After New Hampshire, going into Nevada, I love their strategy in Nevada. They had organized since 2016 to galvanize Nevada. Uh, uh, then after that, mm -hmm. when you, because I think Bernie's campaign always saw uh, Biden as their as their main threat. They saw, uh, based on the sources I have, they saw Buttigieg as kind of a flash of the plan. But, Biden was the favorite, you know, right. last year. So. so when you have, and I think you have similar, you know, maybe not exactly the same sources, but... They saw Biden as the top threat. When you have, after Nevada, when you have your perceived threat on the ropes, do you say, oh, let's just let him, you know, K TKO himself? Or do you punch him in the fucking face? So Bernie Sanders was on 60 Minutes. There was more people watching Bernie Sanders than probably ever. They get 10 to 15 million viewers. 
60 minutes to do the propaganda they do? I'm sorry for the progressives that are going to be mad at me for saying this. You dodge the Cuba answer so that you can't give the media that ammo for days, and you go after Biden. You say on 60 Minutes, listen, Joe Biden, I appreciate his service. This is a different time. And to, view, to, to voters that might be a little older, you speak directly to them because that's your weak spot, particularly African-American voters uh, coming up in South Carolina. I'd like you to look at the record of Joe Biden because the difference between Joe Biden and me, if I'm Bernie Sanders, I would have said this. I voted for the crime bill. I voted for it because there were provisions uh, like the... Explain it clearly. Yeah, and right. it was one of the biggest devastating effects on the African-American community. Uh, there are black men in jail today in South Carolina that should be released. Sure. And Joe, sure. Bi- and Joe, and Joe Biden, to this day, can't say it was a, a mistake. I regret it, and I'm gonna, I would overhaul it. I would He's say... He evaluated himself on it. Right. He says that I need to look at this in a way now, that right. type of stuff, without fully saying, I'm sorry, I was being systematically racist. I wasn't being courageous to crazy Republicans right. and being down the middle of stuff. Because, Andrew, yeah. what's your bigger opportunity before South Carolina? How many doors are you going to knock on or 10 to 15 million people watching you on 60 Minutes? So the bottom line is we could phrase it however you want, take off the gloves, be more aggressive. He never actually waged a campaign against Joe Biden, and that's why he lost. Yes, the media played a major role, but I got news for you. If you would have done the things I'm saying— I knew he was never going to run an ad about the lies Biden told. That, mm-hmm. But if he would have said on 60 Minutes, I also would ask African-American voters in the next state and other states to really look into Vice President Biden's record and mm-hmm. ask, him, ask him a few questions. Because he has told a lot of stories 